Hey guys, Renner here. Welcome back to Beam NG Drive for a bit more banger racing. It's been a while, hasn't it? And that's because various updates to Beam have continued to break this series more and more, but I've been playing around with it and I think I found a way to get it to pretty much work. It's a little bit fiddly, but we can get there. So up front, it's a drag car. I got it on pause because I've had to set everything off ready to go, so I'll explain the rules as we go on. It's a pigeon drag car up front, very fast, not the best brakes, and very exposed to your tackled engine. And in second place is the Grand Marshal Beater, but with a working V8. And as you would have seen, the red car in third, because everything's still in the wrong order, because things don't quite work, is a Wendover Sport SE. And in fourth place, the car that needs to win, because I had to go back and rewatch the end of the last episode to see what car actually won, and it was this one, the ETK S Series S S6 TX. And at the back, we have a 200BX Rocket Bunny version 2 with a 4 litre V8. So now everything should hopefully be underway now. There's massive acceleration from what you'd expect from a drag car. So that's why the uh, everything started pretty close to it. And everything is going, I think. Yep, yeah, everything has managed to get itself going. Now everything spawns on 0.3. I get it to close to 0.69 as I can on the wrist factor holding it down. Sometimes it's a bit over, sometimes it's a bit under. The extension for this is the pigeon because it has a 0.6 because this thing can't stop for most of the corners this way around. So I've had to put it on the lower one just to give it a little bit more of a chance to actually do something. But it's pulling away now. It's been, contact's been, been made out between the Wendover and the Grand Marshal. Now the Grand Marshal is the heaviest car here. But it is also one of the one of the slower ones, so it has the advantage, as all the cars do, when when the one in front of the other, of track position. And for the two lap races, you need to try and hold on to that because every car behind will be faster than the one in front of it, at least at the start, anyway. I can now into the brakes, and I've made it so everything should meet round about here. I have to put these cars a little bit further back because the world is pushing the other two out of the way a little bit too early on. And into the brakes, and there's a lot of pushing there going on, and the pigeon is on two wheels. Can't get itself turned into the corner. No, going to get it slowed down. But now onto two times slower. Is it going to get stopped before it hits the wall? Not quite. Oh, that's a crunch. That's probably... There, yeah, it's done. The front wheels had it. The pigeon is already out. And it didn't even get to the turn one. On the test run, it did. And it is going to you know, continue to cause mayhem. But if it still moves, I can't do anything about that. Now then, the Wendover... Already coming under pressure now. The ETK has been trying to make a way of this. I'll have a choice to go for it. It's going to, it's going to get spun though. It's going to hit the wall. It's it going to come back in front. Hits the ETK. And the weakness of the ETK is the front is the strength of those front wheels. And is it going to try and take out the 200BX? It's going to go for a nudge. It tried or it had to. But it is going to be through to the next round as things stand. It's just got to survive because you've already got the pigeon, which I mean these cars won't know it yet. I mean they've seen it go to the wall. But it is going to be out, and it's going to be hard contact here as well. And it's going to take out the rear lights. Oh, it's take out further the rear light now, side by side. The Grand Marshal going to try and force the ETK the long way around. If it makes it through there, which it does, a nice move actually from the ETK. But can he get himself stopped into the corner? Because the last time I did this race, brakes were an issue for it. And he gets it, he gets through, and now he takes the lead of the race. It's in the lead that he needs, and these back two cars. But it's so much quicker, but it's so dumb. That's why they start so far back. Because it doesn't matter, they only need a lap and a half. Really, now the, no, the uh, 200 base is eating its front bumper. If it's not going to end up being an issue, I will leave it where it is. Now, and how's the pigeon doing? The pigeon is not doing. But this thing could yet cause issues on the next lap round, depending where it's wiggled its way to, because it can only go backwards and forwards. And if the ETK whacks it, then that could end up being the ETK out. Well, of course, they've got to get there yet for that to actually happen. Now, as things stand, all of these cars would be in the next round because the one that needs to win is winning and all these other ones just need to survive. And how the ETK is not pulling away all that much, it's just controlling the pace now. And I don't know how the front wheels survive that massive contact. Because on the, the first edition of this series, back when it was called Race Mania, the, this thing instantly went out with front wheel damage, like near enough every time. And is the 200BX suffering with... Front, eating its front bumper? Or is it out? Either way, it needs to get this slowed down. I think it may be out because the Wendover is coming at speed. It's coming at big speed. And I don't know what's happened there. Well, the radiators have gone now on the Wendover. I don't know. Has it, has it eaten its front bumper? Something went really wrong there. So I'm going to get it slowed down onto 100 times slower. 
And now I'm going to grab the front bumper nodes and I'm going to try and pull it out. Because it, now it is causing issues. That's the only thing that's wrong with the car. If I'm going to just get it out of the wheels. No, that's locked up the wheel. They got to slow down again. And I'll try and put it out, out of the wheel. This thing is rear wheel drive, so if it, this wheel breaks, it won't be the end of the world. But bumper removed. Problem solved. Now then, all the problems now belong to the Wendover, which is now eating its own front bumper. But it's not causing issues at the moment. But now then, with it overheating, it just needs to try and survive the rest of the lap. Because, it, well, it should still be quicker than the Grand Marshal. But in the state that it's in... I'm not too sure. It is maybe just about survival now. Now we're going to get the 200 BX catching up at speed, catching up at massive speed. You see how much is already closing back. On to, we're going to get this thing slowed down here again. And no, not quite in time. It's still a massive contact there. And somehow that's not taking out the radiator or the, uh, the intercooler on the 200 BX. going to give it a shove into the corner. The 200 BX is, is a lot better hitting the apex. And the door's gone on the Grand Marshal. That's not a surprise. We've got a little bit of weight reduction as now onto onto the second lap, which is which yes, definitely onto the second lap now, is the is the ETK, which should, unless the pigeon has a say in things, go on for an easy win. But the second place is still going to be hotly contested between a much smaller 200 BX, but a lot quicker than the Grand Marshal in front of it. How these cars become one? No, they are still separated, and the window is still smoking its way through there in the background. Okay, it's all about the push here now. Can the uh, Grand Marshal just hold it in second place? It doesn't need to hold it in second place, but I'm sure it's going to want to have a psychological advantage going into the next round. And now there's a bit of smoke coming out now, so I think it has finally now taken out the radiator. I'll give it the drag radiator so it actually tries to make it to the end. And the Pigeon, it's not going to cause any issues for the ETK. It gets lucky once again. Imagine to get itself through. Now the Pigeon, is it going to reverse now back out onto the road? You see the other cars coming down into the background, and the Pigeon is... I don't even know what it's doing. It's getting stuck, but I'm going to leave it to do its own thing. As the window just there is there, just overheating away. And now they're into the breaking zone. And the Grand Marshal's got a big shove wide. He's got a big shove. And that's the one I'm going to get stopped now before it goes into the wall. But this, this thing is stronger. It's going to crunch the wheel. Oh, that's a big hit. That's a big hit in a vital part of the car as well. I, I, I can remove wheels if they become problematic. But the thing is, for the pigeon, he only has one front wheel. So I can't remove that one. So the pigeon is done. And it's going to reverse back in front of the Wendover. This car just can't catch a break today, can it? It's going to get out of the way in time. No, it's just going to park it in the middle of the road. That's a big hit on the Wendover to the Pigeon. We're going to bash it now out of the way. And now then, how's the Grand Marshal doing? Not good. So I will remove that. Oh, I accidentally, I accidentally reset the car. Well then. Things happen, but it gets going again. Potentially. Oh, here comes the pigeon to come and play with it. I will let that slide because it was my fault. So if it, it just needs to get going and it will be through into the next round. Is it going to go the right way though? That's the main thing. Well, the next question I should say. And it does get going. Usually cars don't get reset unless they crash before that part of the first lap. But I kind of fat fingered it. So, oh well. Now, is this thing going to get to the line? The 200 BX. Do the lights still work? Do they still function? They know they do, but they're inverted. So I guess they don't really work. And they say he's not got a lot of speed, or he doesn't need to use a lot of speed. And the pigeon, does that thing still move? Somehow, yes, but it's not going to be moving much further for much longer. And the Wendover's both its lights are now on display. But originally there were shutters that come in front of these things to, to hide the lights, because this is the facelift version of the Wendover. And now the Grand Marshal is still doing its own thing. Uh, I have absolutely no doubt now that the thing is going to make it make it round. And even if it was three-wheeling, it probably still would have made it anyway. But the ETK, it's had no worries after the start. This is why, as I said, I said earlier on, this is why these two cars start so much. Oh, the interior is disgusting on this car. What is this? This... I, what is this? No, let's get, let's get away from that. And actually, the 200BX isn't actually all too far behind, all things considered. Still smoking away, still don't know if it's going to make it to the line. I think the Pigeon has finally now given up. There's not a whole lot it can do with the front wheel disconnected as it is. Another window, is that going to make it to the line is the next question. It's smoking heavily, it's still making it round though. And let's get away from this disgusting camera angle. 
And back onto the outboard car. I mean, from the outside, it still looks pretty terrible. But it looks nowhere near as bad as it did. And he's eating the front bumper out of the window. Oh, the wheel's locked up. Okay, so that would mean... And then now I have to remove this, because debris causes issues, gets removed. Now, is it going to take the front wheel off with it? I'm going to try and yank it a bit harder. Not really a whole lot of yanking left that I can do, but that is it removed. And the wheel is now free. That might explain why the 200BX is catching up so much. All it's got to do, though, is get to the line. It's not this one. It's not this line either. It's this next line coming up. All it's got to do is get there. And it secures place into the next round with another win. And that is exactly what it is. The ETK wins again. Put it now then on to stopping. And hopefully it does actually want to stop. Yeah, but it's stopping. Now then, back on board then with the second place car, which started in first place, is smoking heavily again over to the line. Now then, put that on pause. Going to put this now on to random again. This is what I mean. The updates have kind of broken the uh, the AI menu a little bit. I put that thing on stopping, it was smoking heavily at these doors. So this thing wasn't really destined to last much longer. And the engine oil is critically low. Yeah, that would have not lasted all too much longer. The pigeon actually does still function, surprisingly. Although I use function loosely. The Wendover is crawling. I mean, smoking as much as this, that isn't really a surprise. It's smoking that much has been caught up by a now healthy... Grand Marshal, which still has its door, surprisingly. Into the breaking zone, and the door's still not fallen off yet. The door's still not fallen off yet. The, the, the hinges are strong on this car. Well, at least the, well, they're stronger this time around anyway. Is there going to be a late change for third place? Both these cars are going to be through. If they cross the line, they're just going to make it there. And how's the Wendover doing? The Wendover is not doing... It's not doing too badly, given the condition that it's in. And then it's over the line. I forgot, is that the finish line? Yeah, that is. And it finishes in third place. It makes the podium on its first round. Put that now there onto stopping. And I should start slowing down now. Get back aboard here with the Grand Marshal, which is uninversely fixed. Crosses the line. I'm going to put that one onto stopping now as well. And hopefully it wants to actually do that. And it does, but there's going to be end contact here. I think that slowed down a little bit. It's going to be a hard crush on the end, 33 mile an hour right into the back of it. Takes out the radiator of the Grand Marshal, but at this point it doesn't matter, because all four of these cars are through into the next round. So next time round we're going to have a new front place car. I was, I was hoping for more from the Pigeon, but having as much speed as it does and using the track this way round, it is more of a car breaker circuit this way round. So the car again that needs to win next time is the ETK. So if you enjoyed me figuring out a way to actually bring back this series, then leave a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you need to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out any future videos. If you give me a follow on Twitter or Instagram, that'd be much appreciated, the link in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.